It is somewhat ironic that the greatest expansion of federal regulatory activities came during the height of the criticism during the 1960s. Although critics of economic regulation were disillusioned with the performance of the old-style agencies, they did not abandon their commitment to the need for regulation of business. Indeed, the shift from old-style to new-style regulation in the 1960s signaled a reaffirmation to the purposes of regulation. The advocates of social regulation in the 1960s and 70s were almost by nature suspicious of business and industry. They believed that deliberate steps should be taken in setting up the social regulatory agencies so as to avoid the problems of the old-style regulatory agencies. First, Congress wrote enabling statutes creating the new agencies which were much more specific with respect to mission and purpose. In some cases, Congress even provided specific goals and timetables to meet those goals in the legislation. For example, in 1970, Congress gave the Environmental Protection Agency the responsibility to see that hydrocarbons, nitrogen oxides, sulfur oxides, and other air pollutants were reduced by as much as 90% over 1970 levels by 1975. Some have suggested that this type of regulatory approach is technology forcing, meaning that the technology does not exist when the standards are set, but the government expects the industry to develop technologies to meet the standards. Business groups have argued that this type of regulation is unfair and siphons off much of the resources that companies would otherwise use to invest in capital improvements and upgrade facilities. Whether this regulatory approach is fair or unfair to business is not, at this point, relevant. Suffice it to say that the new regulators were of the view that certain social objectives needed to be realized and that could only be accomplished through vigorous regulation. Additionally, the enabling legislation of the social regulatory agencies typically contained provisions providing a basis by which the emerging public interest groups such as consumer unions, environmental groups, etc., could secure court orders compelling an agency to carry out its mission. Agencies like the Environmental Protection Agency have been taken to court repeatedly by the Sierra Club, National Audubon Society, and others in an attempt to get the agency to regulate more vigorously. A second critical difference between the old-style regulatory commissions and the new-style regulatory agencies was that, with only a few exceptions, the new agencies were to be headed by political appointees who were to be answerable to and removable by the president. This type of structure seemed to be a direct response to the problem of regulatory capture in the old-style commissions, particularly given that presidents in this period shared the regulatory philosophy of Congress in setting up the agencies. Examples of this type of presidential agency include the Environmental Protection Agency, Occupational Safety and Health Administration, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, and the Food and Drug Administration. Third, as another way of avoiding regulatory capture, these agencies were typically given a broader scope of regulatory authority than were the regulatory commissions of the earlier era. Rather than regulate one or two industries, Agencies such as Environmental Protection Agency or Occupational Safety and Health Administration must oversee the practices of an almost endless list of companies. OSHA, for example, has the responsibility to set standards for and inspect every place of employment in the country, regardless of the particular business the employer is in. The purpose of broadening the scope of the agency's regulatory authority was to avoid any agency developing the close ties that come with when it does business with only one or two industries. Finally, the agencies would be provided with their own research and administrative staff so that they could have a source of information independent of the regulated industries. Each agency was appropriated its own research budget and hired its own experts to study the effects of exposure to occupational chemicals, the structural integrity of seat backs and automobiles, or the safety of over-the-counter cold or allergy remedies.